we're here at Rising Locust Farm um, in Lancaster, PA. The farm's 42 acres. It's 20 acre silver pasture, cows and sheep and pigs and chickens on pasture. We run a meat CSA and we also do some nuts and produce as well when we have extra stuff, shiitake mushrooms. We wanted to be really tied to the ecological capacity of our land and silvopasture in eastern North America just makes sense. It's, the world wants to grow trees, so why fight that? Hey, sheep. So yeah, this is our silva pasture. Some of the really tall trees we planted five years ago. We sort of self-funded that project. We bought tons of trees really cheap from wholesalers for like a quarter to 50 cents a piece, tiny trees. And we just used electric fencing to keep the sheep and cows off of them. Um, that was mostly successful, but we definitely had a lot of bull damage, things like that but most of the trees re-sprouted. And then you can see all these tubes, and that was a kind of a multifunctional riparian buffer grant. There's a creek behind us, so we're within 300 feet of that stream. So we planted over 125 trees per acre to meet their requirements, and also uh, that's a good number of trees for us as well. Um, in our system, Every fourth or fifth tree will be a mature tree. And that's generally gonna be a honey locust, a persimmon. Uh, we have a few hybrid chestnuts in here. So those are gonna be our long-term shade trees that will maybe create that 30 to 50% shade on the pasture. There's three smaller trees in between them, normally black locust, mulberry, poplar, willow. All those trees will be cut for fodder. So they'll be pollarded or coppiced. Those main trees, though, are our backbone for shade, quick shade for the animals. They suffer in the heat here if they don't have shade, which just really benefits their health. Um, so that means easier lambing, better weight gain. That's, that's a huge, and I think kind of the number one reason for every grazer to switch to planting some trees in their pasture right now just provide so much fertility. They bring up nutrients, they bring up minerals, they bring up water, they shade our grass, which actually grows better in these hot summers where it's 90. Um, in this climate, we don't get a lot of growth when it hasn't rained for two or three weeks like right now and it's 90 every day. But under the trees, we're seeing growth still and lush, really nutritious green grass. We raise Katahdin sheep. So Katahdins are wonderful mothers. They're parasite resistant. They browse a lot. They're sort of on the goat end of the sheep spectrum. <laughs> so they like, to, they like to get up high and eat as much as they can. <laughs> Thing. These are the long-term disturbance regime agents been trying to just mix in different seed after, after they go through an area, including a lot of native grasses and things. Yeah, they're basically sort of to knock everything down in a big way, deposit a ton of nutrients, and reseed the pasture. Try to give them, you know, a locust in their paddock, just to have one shade tree. Um, yeah, they obviously, pigs really need shade. Um, or, or a wallow, which is what's right here. I dump water on hot days. They would destroy the tubes if, if they had any access to them. They would destroy small trees if they had any access to them. So it's kind of like the tree needs to be mature before the pigs interact. They've been here for seven days. I'm actually moving them this afternoon in the lane, just down that way. And so they start at the top of the hill this year. We'll probably do two, three acres of disturbance this year.
These are our Highland cows here, and they, they're really hairy. Uh, so they need shade in the summer. It makes them really um, adapted to winter. And I would say where we are in Pennsylvania is probably about the lower range of where you should have Highland cows. They're incredible browsers, which is really cool. Um, I've put them in the woods to do some invasive removal and they've done an amazing job on multi-floor rows. Uh, that becomes an issue with planting trees because <laughs> they really want what's in the tube. So this year for the first time we've had a few struggles with cows figuring out how to get at the top of the plant and pull the tube and stake out. Uh, the tube still protects the tree from being fully foraged and hurt, but we, we're having to replace stakes. Highland cows might be one of the toughest cows to manage for not eating, scratching, destroying trees. And I think they'll be one of the best cows for a mature silvopasture. We'll be able to rotate through different areas uh, and just cut branches around late July, August when the trees put all the nutrients that they need for the year down um, and it's not a big deal to cut in the summer. It's huge if we can graze longer into the year by supplementing in the summertime. <laughs> Those are three years old. Yeah, willow is an amazing tree for any wet area in a silvopasture. Um, there's no plant that's going to soak up water and nutrients better and turn it into wood and fodder quicker. So these were planted as cuttings in the winter, in December, and they've had three growing seasons and some of them I would say are 20 feet tall now. And they were just, you know, a stick no bigger than a quarter, nickel to a quarter thickness, uh, two feet tall, maybe three feet at the most. It's great, quick shade. And then the sheep and cows uh, love the willow. It has really high tannins, so it's really helpful for parasites um, and just mixing with the sugary and protein rich forages. We've, we've cut branches and dried them and fed them in the winter, and the sheep love that. And so our focus was never to be making money right off the bat. So it's always been, how do we build something sustainably that over time will generate the wealth that will allow us to continue to be here and also the land's wealth will increase ecologically through soil health and diversity and all these things. So that was sort of our orientation from the beginning, but in 10, 20, 50, ideally 100, 500 years for the next generation, uh, they'll have crops that they don't have to plant that will be mature and yield better than maybe anything I see in my lifetime.